This is Canada Reads American Style, featuring two friends who love Canada Reads and Canadian literature. Welcome our host, Rebecca from Michigan and Tara from Ontario. Hi, everyone. It is Rebecca and Tara. And today we, um, we're we laughing because uh, I think Tara, one of Tara's kitties is on the podcast with us today. Is that correct? Yes, he's here. He's uh, <laughs> trying to play with the cord of my of my laptop. And just as Rebecca hit record, I kind of didn't notice. And I was like, Loki, get lost. And then I heard Rebecca <laughs> laugh and I'm like, oops. <laughs> it's too funny. Anyway, but what we are doing today is we're going to be talking about the Eden Mills Writers Festival. And I'm going to turn this right over to Tara because she has had a long history with this uh, amazing festival. And so if you want to just talk a little bit about it and why we're chatting about it today. Okay, so sure, this is a festival that happens every September for the last, I think it's 20 to 25 years. I should have looked up the exact number, but it's been going on quite a long time. It happens uh, usually the second Sunday of September in the small village of Eden Mills, which is here in Ontario. The village is so small that essentially they shut down the village at both ends, because you kind of come, there's two entrances to a main road. They shut it down at both ends so that it's only pedestrian traffic in the village. And it's an open air book festival. And you just go from site to site, listening to amazing Canadian authors read from their work. And then you always have an opportunity to meet and have your book signed if you wish. There's a lot. There's a bookseller. There's many booksellers. So there's uh, the bookshelf, which is an independent bookstore from Guelph, Ontario. That's there. That's their main bookseller. But then there's also in indie presses, small press publishers, and independently published authors. They're selling their books as well. And this will be my first year. I am so excited yeah. to go. And I know there will be perhaps a shuttle involved and. Uh, I don't know. I'm not even sure where I park, but we'll I'll figure all that out. And oh, oh what's yeah. the date of it, by the way? Oh, a Sunday, September 10th. So at the time that we are speaking, you can go online, Eden Mills Writers Festival dot CA, I believe. Let me just check. Yep. Eden Mills Writers Festival dot CA and you can purchase your tickets online. Um, oh, I can tell you parking is usually they have lots of parking and it's in the baseball field that's next to the village it's like a five minute walk to the village and you just it's beautiful it's the the villagers basically are opening up their village to the public to come and share the love of books that is amazing and also you said it's best to bring either a blanket or a chair right yes because seating where it is outdoors it's just it's in a field or someone's backyard the setting is beautiful but yeah, it is on the ground. There's no seating provided. So bring your own little seat if you would like one. Uh, dress for the weather because you are outside. I think it starts around noon. It goes till 530. Uh, be prepared. Maybe bring an umbrella if it calls for it because it tends to go ahead, rain or shine. There's food. There's like lovely vendors. There's always some good food there. Oh, I'm so yeah, excited. I know. I'm so excited to share it with you. Yes. And I, I hope that I will be an annual attendee after this. I'm sure yeah. I will be. But uh, so what we wanted to do, there are four sessions for the day. And as Tara said, the first one starts at noon. And what we thought we would do is talk about which session we would like to attend and maybe one of the author's who we want to listen to uh, speak and maybe perhaps get their book or maybe somebody, not me, who's read them already and wants (laughs) to hear them speak. Uh, So do you want to go first uh, for the first session from 12 to 1? Who do you plan to see? Okay, I am going to the Haunted session, which is with Jessica Johns, Catherine Kutenbrauer, and Michael Melgard. Uh, This seems to be like a horror Uh, session. And I want to go hear Jessica Johns. I read her book, Bad Cree. I chatted about it in book chat number nine, episode 141, if you wanted to go back to that. And I was really looking forward to hearing her in person and to the other two authors because their books sound great as well. That is so wild that you, that it's, I didn't even realize that Jessica Johns was 
who wrote Bad Cree. I didn't even yeah. realize it. Because guess which session I plan to go to? I would have called, ooh, 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 falling into place. Nope. No, nope. I'm going to go to Haunted uh, as well because. Really? Yes, because the person that I, and I forgot about Jessica Johns. Yeah. Because I hadn't, I don't think you had reviewed Bad Cree when I first looked at the list a while back. And yeah. so I did not connect the dots that she wrote that. So the reason uh, I wanted to go was because he, Michael Melgard has written yeah. not that kind of place, which is publishing August 29th, 23, which is right here mm -hmm. um, for us. And I'm just going to give a little hint of what this is about. It says in May, 1997, 18 year old Laura McPherson left her house for a run and didn't return. 20 years later, a reporter arrives in the small town of Griffiths to write an article about the unsolved murder of Laura McPherson. He is the most recent in a long line of journalists, podcasters, and amateur sleuths seeking new insights into what really happened to Laura. Mm -hmm. And I thought that sounded really great. It, but It sounds really good. But I'm excited to hear Jessica Johns because yeah. I definitely want to read Bad Cree. Wow. Yeah. No, it's going to be a great session. I was like, that's a good one. Yeah. That's so funny. I didn't, oh, I, I might have guessed you would go to that one if I had realized, if I had connected the dots on that one. So, yeah. I'm disappointed you didn't think that I would be going to that one. No, I'm not. Well, you know, no, it's true because, no, you're right because it says haunted. Like, you know what? I have to, I have to admit, when I was preparing my little paper here, I didn't even realize they had themes. I swear to God. I, mean, I just do not always read things through yeah. I, you know i don't i don't read directions it's i mean seriously like, i do not read directions so i didn't even realize it said haunted till you said that so there you go there <laughs> yes, you go. I so we will known. be at the first one together <laughs> <laughs> that is too funny oh my gosh okay so for the 1 30 to 2 30 session yeah. why don't you the, go first yes the one i plan to go to is uh the title of the theme i'm looking at it now is yeah. modern modern folklore. Mm. And the person I really wanted to see now, I must say too, I'm just picking out one author that I was most excited to see throughout like that time period. Right. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that there aren't a ton of books that I want to read because I have to say this lineup oh. seems phenomenal, yeah. by the way. So uh, I wanted to see Zalika Reed Benta mm -hmm. and she's written a book called River Mama and it's published August 22nd, 23. And it says here from the Giller nominated author of Frying Plantain comes an exhilarating magical realist novel about a millennial black woman who navigates her quarter life crisis while embarking on a quest through the streets of Toronto. And I thought that is really hits like yeah. ticks a lot of the boxes of things I'm interested in. Toronto, uh, magic realism, this kind of fantasy element that I'm trying to introduce more into my life and also she's a giller a nominated author so i wanted to yeah. see her so that's my 130 to 230 slot yeah how about how about you this was tough for me because one i really want to see her and i have read her i i want to read river mama i have it on my stack ready to go for in the next few weeks mm -hmm. uh, and i've read her frying plantain the short story collection that she was uh, nominated and it was really really good and very different from River Mama. So mm -hmm. I, I, I really like that she's doing like something different. So I was very interested in her. I will also want to shout out that there's another session with Holly Hogan, who uh, wrote Message in a Bottle, Ocean Dispatches from a Seabird oh. Biologist, which I read earlier this summer and yeah. loved. So I was like really want to go see her as well. But in the end, I am going with another session titled Finding My Voice. Yes. Yeah, I know. I and this know. is all three, like all, all three authors here. I can't, so uh, beloved Ali Hassan, Yay. which is memoir. Yeah. Um, Uzma Jalaluddin. So Much Ado About Nada, which I think I spoke about in episode 145 so book chat number 10 and then amy jones whose new book is pebble and dove which i just finished reading and absolutely oh. loved so all three of them are together that's I gotta amazing go. i gotta go oh heck yeah. yeah i may try and sneak over during the signing portion to mm -hmm. get my message in a bottle signed by holly hogan i think that's my plan yeah i have to laugh because 
that one, when I saw Ali and Uzma, uh, those two, I was like, oh, maybe I should go to that one. And then I thought, well, you know, I think for me, the opportunity to see some of these people might be fairly limited because I don't live in Canada. Yeah. So I thought, you know, Ali's sort of everywhere. Uzma is just so popular right now. And I thought this way, not that Zalika is not, I'm not saying that, but mm-hmm. it's just the opportunity for me to see her in person is probably a little more limited. So that's kind of why I picked uh, that one in particular. But I know you'll have to, if you do speak to Ali, you'll have to say hi from me uh, to him. So I will. Yeah. Okay, how about your three to four o'clock slot? My three to four. Oh, this one I am going with the It's the End of the World as We Know It session, Mm -hmm. which features Michelle Min Sterling and her book Camp Zero. I saw it's been compared to Station Eleven. So quickly, it's America 2049 with nearly intolerable high temperatures, fossil fuel industry that has been shut down and humans that are implanted with what's called a flick at birth, which allows them to remain perpetually online. So I, I, this book sounds amazing and I Mm -hmm. want to hear her talk about it. That sounds like I I like this whole theme of this session. Mm -hmm. This was the hard one for me because I really wanted to see Michelle Min Sterling for the one you just talked about, Camp Zero, yep. because I want to read that. That looks fabulous. And then also under Lost and Found, Don Gilmore has written a book called To the River, Losing My Brother, which that one sounded really wonderful. But I have decided to go to Larger Than Life because Brett Popplewell published a book April 25th of twenty in 23 titled... Outsider, An Old Man, A Mountain, and the Search for a Hidden Past. And this one is about, it says, Into the Wild, which is one of my favorite nonfiction books of all time, by the way, meets Born to Run, meets The Stranger in the Woods in a fascinating true story of a marathon running hermit and a journalist's quest to solve the mystery at the core of the enigmatic man's existence. So, that nonfiction just sounded really incredible. It's the kind of book I love. Yeah. It's the kind of nonfiction that I get really excited about. And so this was a hard choice, but I really do want to see Brett Popplewell. Yeah. yeah. And there's other good books in that session as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is a tough session too. Yeah. I think this was the, well, I, <laughs> I say this was the toughest one, but actually the last session between four thirty and five thirty. Mm-hmm was the freaking hardest one because I'll let you go next and explain why it's the hardest (laughs) one. (laughs) So I've gone with the, there are three. I know there's two that Rebecca's torn between. I've gone with the ripple effect, which includes Yannicka Oza, who did the history of burning Amanda Peters, who wrote the berry pickers and Catherine Katerina Vermeet with her new book, The Circle. It that's like a stellar lineup. That's, that's yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's like I've read a history of burning and the berry pickers I also just finished and I was floored by the berry pickers. I loved it. So I've got to see her again because I, I saw her in before I read the book. I was lucky enough to see her here in Burlington, but mm-hmm. and then to hear Katerina Vermet talk about her new book. Yeah, it's it was a no-brainer for me, I got to be honest. Yeah, it was a no-brainer for me because that's the one I want to, mm-hmm. to go to because The Berry Pickers is on my TBR. And of course, I just read The Strangers, which I loved even more than I loved The Break. And then What's the new one called again? Uh, I What's think it? it's The Circle. That's right, The Circle. Yeah. So, which makes sense because I think it's bringing it all back together yeah. and it's circling. Yeah. Anyway, I really want to see her. However, I kind of said again to myself, the chances are I can see other, you know, I could even see online interviews with her. She's going to be everywhere talking about that book. And so I am going with Changemakers because I want to see Gabrielle Aladua. Mm-hmm. And he wrote, Harve- uh, it published in March 21 of 23, and it is Harvesting Freedom, the Life of a Migrant Worker in Canada. And that has always been a topic. I will just 
take do a little aside here. When I was in my early 20s, I moved to Los Angeles and I was working in restaurants and bars. And that's where I met a lot of guys who were, you know, work as bus boys, barbacks, that type of thing. And they were all pretty much undocumented workers. They lived because I got to know them really well. And they would live together in a like in a very small place. A whole bunch of them would live together. They'd send money home. And I came from a predominantly white, I won't say a small town, but predominantly white community, didn't have life experience. And meeting all these guys and talking to them about what their lives were like, where they were from, what was like, what life was like in Los Angeles, sending money home, being completely exploited for their labor, by the way. And I was so naive because I came from a union town and I just said, even though we weren't a union, of course, I would just say to them, you need to complain and you need to ask for more money. And they'd like, no, 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 no. I was so naive. I did not understand who they were and how they lived. And that I've never lost that interest and passion for the people who do work that is so fundamental to our success in our world and who get so little respect. So this book to me is why I cannot miss an opportunity to hear him speak about that book. So yeah. even though I'm giving up Catherine de Vermette to, to do it, I, I just feel I had to go with that decision. So, Oh, you're so logical. I, 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 <laughs> well, yeah, like but I you, do. I really appreciate that, 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 that you're working that way through it kind of thing. It's very cool. Yeah. But I think, but look at it. You're going to see, you're, you're going to have two categories or two sessions that day where you've read all the authors. I know. That's amazing. Well, I mean, it's not surprising. You are totally 100% the most candid person I know, honestly. So I'm not surprised at all. But I, and that book, his book sounds really, really good. Like I I feel like that's, I'm going to be picking up his book, Mm -hmm. but I cannot miss a chance to see those three women. (laughs) Oh yeah. No, and I'm going to, I know I'm going to, on some level, I will regret it. So I'm just, it is what it is. But I'm not kidding you. I spent a lot of time going over that. And I just kept yeah. thinking, I can't, because where else am I going to hear Gabriel necessarily speak about this book? Yeah. And that's what it kept coming down to. And it's a subject that's so close to my heart for 40 plus years. Yeah. So I just sort of felt like I can't, I, I got to go to that. And you can always change your mind. Like you, you can. Absolutely. You always can. But yeah, I do. I do but, appreciate that. Think yeah. about this, though. You know I don't like a crowd, so I'm pretty sure yes. the crowd very well may be the biggest <laughs> yes. to see that last session that you're, you'll go to. And I feel like the other one I'm going to as well with the Ali Hassan and Uzma mm-hmm. and Amy Jones, I think that's going to be a big crowd as well. Yeah. But, but uh, <sighs> you know, whatever. It's outside. You. It's fine. And I'm just so freaking excited. I'm so glad uh, for many reasons that I met you over... Instagram and everything, bookstagram, I should say. And I, now I have this opportunity to see all these Canadian authors in person and listen to them. And because there is nothing I love more when it comes to reading and books, et cetera, than listening to authors talk. I just, oh, I, know. I totally fangirl because I don't have the talent to write, but I just think they are the greatest. Like, they, yeah. anyway, I just, it is yeah. the best day. It is one of my favorite days of the year. I think it's second to Christmas day. Cause I love Christmas day. And then there's this day it's, yeah. I look forward to it. I start counting day down to the day, the day after it ends. I'm like, here we go. I'm also, you know what else you may enjoy? Cause I'm going to also shout out that they have a, a children's nook. So mm-hmm. they also have children's programming going on the entire day with children's authors reading. So where your kids, kids can go and hang out, it's a beautiful, like, that's a really cool little thing they've got going on, too. And you love picture books. You might want to I pop know. in there and just, like, take in 15 minutes. They're in, like, little 15 to 30-minute sessions. Like, they're not mm-hmm. very long sessions because they're for kids, right? It, yeah, it's so funny. Thank you for mentioning that because that was something else that I did kind of look a little bit at the at the at those titles. I decided, I made that decision pretty much to go with the titles I picked here, but... Yeah, you're right. I'm such a picture book lover and so children's literature and stuff. So I did think about that. So that's a really good idea. If I can pop over, I will, yeah. um, because I would love to see the authors and, and or illustrators. I'm not sure if it's both and or, but yeah, that's really great too. 
Oh, I was going to say and one last thing about the festival uh, for any budding writers out there. They are offering online workshops as well this year. So you can register for them. I think they're the week before the festival this year by Canadian authors. And they're amazing. There's some amazing ones there. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about or developing your writing skills, they have some online workshops that you can also look into at their website. So I think we have done a great job explaining what we're going to do. And then I think after the festival, we'll have to at least give a little uh, sort of follow up to say whether or not we followed through with the plan that we had, or if yep. I threw caution to the wind and just went all over the place. We'll see what, <laughs> what happens. So, uh, oh, so let me just ask you because we didn't do it at the beginning because we weren't sure how much time this would take. But uh, what are you currently reading? Okay, so this is very interesting for my reading. Well, at least I think it's very interesting to my my 16 my no he's 17 now 17 year old son pretended that it was interesting today when I was telling him Aww. about it too I know he I had no it. choice I was treating him to <laughs> coffee okay <laughs> so this September I am participating and so are you yes yes uh, along with our friend so friend of the podcast Trish who is Trish at Trish Talk talks books on Instagram. She is doing a tackle your TBR challenge for the month of September. So normally at the beginning of each September, I build up a little stack of books that I intend to read that month. The that month. Trish has made this very open-ended. So when she put it out there on Instagram, she it's to like tackle either your physical TBR or your virtual TBR you come up with your own rules. It's very flexible kind of thing. And just to use the month of September for that. So I decide to join in and what I want to tackle. So as I've mentioned before, each year I like to read the um, long list for the Giller. This year's nominees are going to be announced on September 6th. And I still have five of last year's long list nominees to read. So that is my goal for September, to read those books. And I think Trish is going to help me do that with her TBR challenge. The first book that I have going to read is We Measure the Earth with Our Bodies by Sering Ying Sum Lama. So that's, uh, I'm going to be starting that one later today. Yeah. So I'm very excited. Yeah, that was one I actually started last year or when it came out. I was able to get a copy right away. Yes, I know all think. of you. Yeah, all of you in Canada had to wait for months and months and yes. months and months because you guys all had huge long lists uh, for it. Yeah. But um, honestly, I just wasn't in a good place when I started reading it. Yeah. But you'll have to let me know. I'm Obviously, you'll let us know what you think of it and everything. So, yeah. So I just kind of put it back. Yeah. I, I started it and didn't grab me right away. So I'm really it's a long book. It looks like I can't give you the page number now, but it's much longer than I like. It's a bigger book than I was expecting. Mm -hmm. And I waited for my library hold to come in a long, yeah. long time, which I was surprised at. I'm like, why is because it would just kept dwindling very slowly. Was I crawling up kind of thing? And I'm like, I probably am looking into too much into that because I'm like, is it taking people this long to read this book? Like, you know, it, mm -hmm. it it took so long to get this book that I'm wondering if it's a bit of a slog for people. Yeah. Like, is it taking them a long time, like, to get through this book? And that's why it's taken so long to get it because it wasn't a huge list, a number of, ahead of me, but... Yeah, it could be that if, if you have like a three week checkout, it could be that people are just holding on to it that long. So, yeah, which is kind of unusual for like a book that people really want to read. You tend to read through those a little faster, right? So, yeah, we will see. Yeah. And so for me, for the challenge, as we I've talked about before, I have four books left on my TBR for this year. And so Obama. That's amazing, so, Rebecca. I'm sorry. That's amazing. Again, keep in mind, these are only the books I purchased. I th This is my TB. No, this is not my. TBR that's on Goodreads, but this is my TBR, no, just still. physical titles, right? Yeah. But yeah, I have um, two Richard Wagamese books and I have Daughters of the Deer, which you've already read and really, yep. really enjoyed. And then I thought if I finish those three in September, yeah. then I could spend October, November, December reading <laughs> Obama. <laughs> I think Obama's going to take me probably that long. So that I makes think, sense. So Trisha's challenge came up at the yeah, perfect time. It really did. 
because it yeah it pushes me to get those three done in September and then just spend the rest of the time with uh you know I spent all that time with Ted now yeah. I'm going to spend all this time with Barack so yeah. I think it's all good. I thought for a minute there I thought you when you said you had four and you mentioned Barack's book first I'm like is she thinking she's going to finish <laughs> Barack and the other three books all in a single month? What? No, you might be able to. You know me. No. I'm a. I mean, I'm a slow reader. So <laughs> that's a big book. That's a big book. So you had um, me a little scared there, and yet impressed. I still yeah, am. Well, thank so, you. I like to. Yeah. You know, I like to shock people every once in a yeah. while. I guess so. Keep me on my toes. Absolutely. So Tara and I have been talking about doing a Patreon account where we would provide extra special content for subscribers and it would be like five dollars a month and we were thinking about starting it in january and well first let me mention before we're what we're going to do tara you subscribe to a couple of different ones right so yes, you have I experience do. with that yeah. i enjoy it they put in um uh, one does little videos, occasional videos, and just shows their what they're reading off their bookshelf or something, which is really nice. So that's the Book Cougars podcast. And the other one is currently reading podcast, and they do extra episodes, like themed episodes, usually two to three a month that they put out on their Patreon, but with yeah. guest hosts. Like So that podcast has two full-time hosts. And then for their Patreon episodes, it's generally one of the hosts with a special guest host oh. doing it. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. So what Tara and I were thinking about is having like a once a month Zoom book chat with our Patreon uh, subscribers where we talk about what you're currently reading, because we're always telling you what we're reading, but we thought it would be really fun if we had, a, you know, a handful of people that would once a month come on Zoom and chat with us. And sometimes we pose questions on our podcast. And of course, we have no real way of getting your responses back unless you mm -hmm. make comments in the, in the, uh, well, actually, really, if you do it on our YouTube channel, you can make comments, but there, you can't really do that. Well, I guess you can do it on Podbean or whatever, but yeah. Or send us a DM, but yeah, but yeah. we don't get a lot of engagement that way. But we thought this way when we ask those questions, we could do that once a month, include those kinds of questions that we ask uh, for that once a month kind of chat. And the reason we're doing it is I really love the idea of interacting more with all of you, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> that that we thought build that, our community, build like a real bookish community here. Yeah, for us. Yeah, exactly. We're really excited about that. And we could just, like I said, really have fun hearing what you're reading, just chatting with other like-minded people, talking about Canlit or whatever. So we just wanted to give you a heads up that we're thinking about doing that now. And then hopefully if you're interested, we get some idea if you're interested and then launch it in January of 24. Yeah. Help us all build our TBR together. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. Shoot. I hadn't thought that through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it's going to jump up huge. <laughs> Absolutely. But seeing, but now on Storygraph, I'll be able to say who recommended yes. it. So that will make me even happier. So, yeah. but anyway, so, well, I just want to thank everybody and, and thank Tara for this great program because without Tara, I would have never been, I would have known, I would not have known about Eden Mills and I certainly wouldn't be going. So, Thank you, Tara, for introducing this fabulous festival to me. Oh, my pleasure. I am looking forward to sharing it with you. And I just, I cannot wait. Like I am counting down. I'm getting ready to check the weather report starting soon. Yeah, for the absolutely. Tent. Yeah, love it. Okay, happy reading, everyone. Thank you for joining us on our bookish journey. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing, rating, and reviewing Canada Reads American Style wherever you listen. You can connect with the podcast and Rebecca on Instagram at Canada Reads American Style and with Tara at On a Branch Reads. Until next time, keep reading. <laughs>